Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to another weekly reading wrap up. I may still be half asleep early on a Sunday morning, so I don't have a better introduction than that. Let's talk about books. <laughs> I'm going to start with the dud from the past week. I finally pushed through the audiobook of On the Steel Breeze by Alistair Reynolds. This is the sequel to Blue Remembered Earth that I read a couple of weeks ago, and it's um, part of the Poseidon's Children series, I believe. Um, this was not good in multiple ways and unenjoyable in multiple ways. Um, the first book, the main characters were Sunday Akinya and her brother Jeffrey, and On the Steel Breeze follows Chiku, who is Sunday's daughter. Uh, Chiku cloned herself when she was an adult, and then she and her clones went off in, in different directions. The original Chiku, Chiku Yellow, remained on Earth. Chiku Red went out on a mission to find the ship Memphis and recover Eunice Akinya, who is her great-grandmother. And then Chiku Green went on the hollow ship mission to colonize Crucible, which is an alien planet with a mandala etched into its geography. Uh, and to find out what's there. And the main plot is basically that Chiku Yellow on Earth and Chiku Green on the Crucible mission are dealing with either end of a problem involving an artificial intelligence named Arachne, who is possibly threatening humanity on Earth and has also lied to them about the true nature of Crucible, and nothing may be as everyone thought it was going to be. And it was boring as hell. This book was slow as molasses, which is not a knock on molasses. I, I like molasses. Um, and it just it was too long. I criticized the first book for this as well, but On the Steel Breeze is just boring. It lacks some of that sense of wonder about the world building and what the future is like. If you're reading these books in order, then you probably already know all of these concepts. You were introduced to them in the first book, and the second book, in my opinion, doesn't really further investigate much of the world building and the technology and the possibilities. It's just, yeah, it's the same as the first book, but slower. And I really didn't like Chiku either. I, I think that this book is possibly just flat out not written very well. I felt like Reynolds was telling you lots of things rather than showing it to you, and he's trying to describe to you three different lives of a single woman rather than showing you what those women are feeling and like what they really are from the inside. And I was, I was bored with this woman, but I also found every version of her, possibly with the exception of Chico Red, because she's not really in the story that much, they're all like fundamentally deceitful people. <laughs> and despite the fact that they're described as having relationships and families, and they have feelings about like their, their husbands and their children, I never felt it. I always felt like when push came to shove, Chiku would just abandon everybody in her life and do what she wanted to do, and it would not, she wouldn't lose any sleep over it either. But she has this tendency in the story to tell everybody, I can't tell you that, or lies to them, or only tells them half the truth. I just think she's a deceitful person that nobody should trust, and I don't see how she got to repeatedly be in a position of authority because there's no reason to really trust her except for her family name. She's an Akinya, but that doesn't seem to really matter at this point in the future, though. It was really frustrating. So, yeah, I'm glad it's over. I was ready for this book to be over after the first couple of chapters, and I mostly finished it because I needed something to listen to while I was working on crafting projects, and it's 28 hours long. So, yeah. I don't think I'm going to read the third and final book in the series. It looks like it's even worse than the first two. 
Another book that I didn't super love this past week was Texts from Jane Eyre by Mallory Ortberg, who I believe is now known as Daniel Lavery. This is a humorous book that imagines text messages between characters from classics and most of it went over my head. I didn't get most of the jokes because I hadn't actually read many of the classics that were being referred to in this. I got like the Jane Austen jokes and you know the Wuthering Heights and um, Jane Eyre things, but for the most part I didn't get it at all, which is more me than the book itself. So I'm kind of glad that I checked this out, but a little bit sad that I didn't get most of the humor. I mean, I don't get a lot of humor anyway, but... <laughs> the last book that I read for the Owls Readathon in April was Reaper Man by Terry Pratchett. This was a reread for me, and I think it's the second book in the Death sub-series of Discworld. And I enjoyed rereading this a lot, though it is definitely not my favorite of the Death novels or my favorite of the Discworld novels by far. Um, this one I chose for the owls because one of the main characters, like half of the story, follows a wizard and that matched one of the owls' prompts. Um, so Wendell Poons is the wizard who is supposed to die but can't because death currently doesn't exist. Um, the auditors are back, or rather this takes place before Hogfather, so this might be the first appearance of the auditors. They've decided that death is too human, too messy, too emotional, and they are going to eliminate death and let a new one appear. So death is basically out of a job. He becomes Bill Door, and his side of the story is him off trying to discover what it means to be Bill Door and basically working as a farmhand. And then in Ankh Morpork, um, Wendell Poons's uh, viewpoint is all the stuff going crazy because things can't die and there's an excess of a life force in Discworld, which is having a terrible effect. <laughs> um, this reminded me a lot of Hogfather, which is one of the Discworld novels and one of the death novels that I've reread many times. And I couldn't help but notice the similarities and I think I prefer what's going on in Hogfather to uh, what's happening in Reaper Man, but it was still a really fun read and I just, I love Terry Pratchett's sense of humor, I love all the footnotes, I love all the cameo appearances from many of the characters. It was a really fun read. And now we're on to my two favorite reads of the week. The first one is perhaps a bit unexpected, The Book of Questions by Pablo Neruda, translated by William O. Daly. So Neruda was a Chilean poet. He's a Nobel laureate, actually. And I think this was his very last collection that he wrote. It was published like a year after his death. And this was so good. It is literally a list of like a couple hundred questions in like couplet format that are supposed to be unanswerable or like something to meditate on, to think on. Some of the questions are just downright humorous. Um, one of the very first ones is, why don't the immense airplanes fly around with their children? Just think about it for a minute. Um, I thought a lot of this was really funny. It just tickled my fancy. But there are also a lot of these questions that are perhaps more philosophical, religious, political. There's some really political ones, like the whole series of couplets that are about Hitler, for example. Um, it just, it, this works so well for me. I was so surprised. I asked my library to get this just on a whim because I wanted to try something else by Neruda and I thought, well, why not start with the one that seems kind of unusual, which is just a list of questions, and it was really good. I kind of want to own my own copy of this because I, I kept going back and rereading some of my favorite of the questions and everything, so yeah, it was really fun. This is one of the Copper Canyon bilingual editions, and it's really nice that the English version is on the same page as the original Spanish versions. So I actually read both, um, the English and the Spanish, uh, but once again, my reading comprehension in Spanish is really poor, but this was some good practice. 
And then my favorite read of the entire week was Penric and the Shaman by Lois Master Bujold. This is my third read of this novel, and it's the second in the Penric and Desdemona series. And I loved it, <laughs> no surprise there. This takes place four years after the first novella, so Penric has now gone through all of his training. He is a full-fledged sorcerer and a temple divine, and he is called in to help a detective, like they call them locators, but uh, this man named Oswell who is hunting for a fugitive who may have stolen a ghost, which is serious business given the religion and the gods and how death works in this world. Um, since the ghost or the spirit has been stolen, it's sundered from its god, and this is terrible. So they're trying to retrieve the ghost, but also figure out what happened, this possible murder, and is the man that they're searching for really... has he really committed a crime or not? And this also comes back to the other type of magic in this world, um, which is kind of the focus of The Hallowed Hunt, I believe. Isn't that the third novel in this world? Uh, which is about shamans and this um, the, the great beasts, a very different way of doing magic um, from the like demon-based sorcery that Penric practices. And I really like how that is included in um, the novellas here. Inglis, who is the, the shaman in the story, is perhaps not my favorite character. I noticed in this read that he just came across as a bit brooding and emo and well, he's very young and inexperienced and distraught most of the time. I think Penric is far more adult than he is, despite them probably being about the same age. And I continue to love Oswell, who is very serious most of the time and has to deal with just Penric and Desdemona being not at all what he expected and not predictable and everything. So yeah, that's really good fun. And I will go on to Penric's Fox, the next story very soon. I'm babbling now. None of that made any sense. Uh, so those are all the things that I finished reading this past week. I have no idea what I'm going to pick up next, but I need to get back to reading more of the books that I own and some of my um, acquisitions this year, so we'll see if I get around to that. Um, I may not have a video out as usual in the middle of the week. I want to do a book haul next, but I am waiting for the rest of my book mail to arrive, and I don't know when I will sit down to film that. So if I disappear over the next week, it's just because I need a little bit of time off and I'm waiting for my books to arrive. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Let me know if you've read any of these books that I talked about today. Leave me a comment down below and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye!